All right, we're going to be palpating the quadratus lumborum muscle next. So I'm going to be just taking the person's arms, moving it out of the way. This gives me a little bit easier access to this area. So quadratus lumborum is the most posterior of your abdominal muscles, and it really is kind of deep within this low back. Again, there's going to be some controversy out there about how easily you can or cannot palpate it because it is very deep. It is through all the layers of your erectors, a little bit out to the side here, and then through all of the abdominals. But we're going to go through kind of the O's and I's and palpation of it generically, and then you guys can think about how well you're actually contacting or not. The pelvic attachment for this muscle is here along the posterior iliac crest. So I'm just sinking in along the top of his iliac crest, and it again is very deep, more on the anterior part of that iliac crest. And as it makes its way posterior towards the sacrum here, again, very, very deep in this location, not easily able to feel this, and more just over top of it. This is me cross-fibering what is known as the iliolumbar ligament. And this iliolumbar ligament is going from the iliac crest heading towards the transverse process of the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, which are gonna be quite deep in this location. So, origin, iliac crest, and the iliolumbar ligament. The muscle then continues and starts attaching along all of the transverse processes. Um, versus another text, we'll talk about just one through four, but because of that iliolumbar ligament, that's where it gets the fifth. So I'm along this third one here, going a little bit higher into number two. And again, that transverse process of lumbar one is gonna be underneath rib 12 and very tricky to feel. So it really depends on the person and if you're able to actually feel that. Another method to try and get in the approximate area is to use a spinous process. So I'm gonna walk myself central. Here is a spinous process of five, four, and three. So once you've found the spinous process of lumbar three, move lateral past the erector spinae group. If you wanted to prove that, you could ask them to gently just lift their head and neck up out of the cradle. There we go. There's the edge of his erectors here. So I'm gonna sink in lateral to the iliocostalis, and you can go back down. And then I'm gonna sink in on an oblique angle, kind of almost like a 45 degree angle here, going deep and medial until I feel some bony resistance. So I'm getting a little bit of bony resistance, and I believe I have found the transverse process in the lumbar spine. If you need to, you can ask your person to take a couple nice, slow, deep breaths in. And then on your exhale, you kind of sink in and follow it. This will allow some of the muscle tissue to relax a little bit to make sure you've really sunk into this kind of quadrant at the back. Finally, we're going to ask our person to do what is known as a hip hike. So basically what he's going to try to do is bring this whole leg up good, just like that towards his shoulder. You might have to teach a person this a couple times and you can relax for me, but basically they're trying to slide their leg up, not flex their hip. So if you watch really carefully right over top of my fingertips, when I'm over top of the quadratus lumborum and he goes through that action, I'm gonna get pushed up. Yes, absolutely, there's gonna be some abdominal muscles firing in this area and you can relax, but deep to that quadratus lumborum, one of its actions is to elevate the ilium or a layman's version of that would be a hip hike. So let's do that one more time, just a nice little good, perfect, that's enough for us and you can relax. So there's quite a bit of function of the quadratus lumborum here. I'll just finish off by contacting the last attachment as we discuss the actions just after that. So we've had iliac crest, iliolumbar ligament, the transverse processes of lumbar four, three, two, one, and lastly, the inferior surface of rib number 12 here. So again, I'm just gonna sink in and try to hook my fingers to the inferior part of that rib 12. And if you could just gently start to raise that hip, that's enough, perfect, and you can relax for us. So the actions, because again, we can move these ribs down or we can laterally flex. So we have an inferior movement of rib 12. We have lateral flexion of the trunk and spinal joints. If you activate both QL together, that would help extend the spine. On unilateral, it's gonna to start to elevate the ilium on one side, and as well as you can pull on this pelvis going into more of an anterior pelvic tilt at the lumbosacral joint. So we have quite a bit of action um, for a tiny muscle 
that again, controversial on how much you're actually palpating it versus the other abdominal muscles. That's going to finish our palpation for the quadratus lumborum. All right, we're going to go through just a little extra video here on how to get into the quadratus lumborum from a sideline position. Oftentimes, um, you'll see QL listed on some cases, maybe inside of your exams, um, for something to do with something like scoliosis or even a pelvic lift. So we often would use a sideline position when treating scoliosis. So I'm going to show you an alternative method to kind of get in that, that quadratus lumborum. So here is our spinous processes in the lumbar spine. Again, moving lateral past a lot of these erectors. You can already kind of see a little bit of the hyperemia from where I went in from the prone position here. Here is the bottom of the rib 12, and there is that iliac crest through there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go directly above this, where I'm still lateral to those erectors. He's going to take a nice, slow, deep breath in for me. And on that exhale, I'm sinking in until I get a nice bony resistance right across the transverse process of the lumbar spine in here. So again, a couple different ways to kind of access that. Once I've landmark it, I might reinforce my fingers gently. Another nice deep breath in for us. Beautiful and relax. And ever so gently, if you can start to do that hip hiking, bring that ilium, perfect. And as soon as he does that, my fingers are getting pushed out and he's gonna relax and we can go back in. So sometimes that good old trigger point location you might just be kind of pushing in here, whether you're releasing it, something like that or not, or just some digital pressure into the lateral abdominals where the QL would be will be helpful to try and loosen up this quadrant of the lower back.